Guys, um, first things first, the In Rainbows album, right? What was the most difficult part of doing it yourself, the DIY aspect of it? Uh, getting the wording right on the website was yes, quite tricky. Was interesting. I, I know that might sound a bit superficial, mm. but actually how to get it across to people that this was a, you know, you're making a donation. We're asking how you word it without sounding pompous or irrelevant or irreverent, rather. Or irrelevant. Or irrelevant. Um, that was pretty tricky. And you had no real idea of the consequences at all. You had no idea how it was going to work out because it was a brand new model, if you think about it. People hadn't really done this before, certainly not on your level. So was it an exciting thing saying, let's throw it out there and see what happens? Oh, it was certainly exciting. It was, um, yeah, because uh, there was a, a few, few meetings that we you know, were sitting down and just finished doing the record, uh, had it in a box, um, wanted to put it up and just yeah, free of all the mechanics, all the drudgery of the whole thing, having not basically talked to anybody, done any interviews, any explanation, no nothing. So basically, nobody knew outside the camp, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it was it was one of the most exciting things we've ever done, I think, actually. Yeah, of course, one of the most exciting things any band has ever done. But is it fair to say that you had finished the album, it was recorded, ready to go, you possibly would have released it through EMI or whatever, until your managers came up with the idea more than maybe you did. And then you went, hey, that's a pretty good idea, let's try it. We hadn't re really signed with EMI. We'd ha we, we had yeah. a sort of dialogue going about how do, what kind of record are we making, how are we going to release it, you know, who are we going to go, where is it applicable? And then in about April of last year, they came and said, listen, we've got this idea, and... Um, but, you know, a lot of it was informed by the, the leaking thing. Yeah. Right, previous albums of yours had been leaked on the net. Every, everything, even my record, everything had been leaked. And part of that was down to the mass production element of things. Yeah. By the time it gets to the vinyl plant, or it doesn't matter what you do, some, some bugger's going to put it up on the net and go, and think they're really clever. So... The you know the idea was just to say well nobody gets it pre at all you know as an experiment, and you know when you re when you when you finish a record <coughs> you've got this three month lead time that everything all the parts have to get in place and it is it's so frustrating you know it's not it's not you, you you're you know you're holding you've got yeah it's it's just it you finish this record you want people to hear it and then it's like another half, quarter of a year it can be half a year almost. And also, the other thing that really gets my goat is that you, because of the nature of, you know, journalists don't get paid much anymore, the budgets are cut in magazines and so on. So what tends to happen, you have the first two or three reviews come out, what it, whoever wrote them first, um, and then get cut and pasted and repeated and repeated and Course. repeated. And that winds me up, something chronic. So it was a good way of sort of saying, well, everybody gets to make up their mind at once. came out you had a good eight or ten weeks for people to do whatever it is they wanted to do to get the album but then it came out in physical form it did go in physical form to number one in the US and the UK was there any element of thinking about that beforehand of, gosh how's this gonna work out or was there any element of now there's a result imagine Absolutely. we gave it away ten weeks for free <laughs> we gave away ten weeks and we still <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean yeah, it was it was a complete result it was bonkers we could man. not believe it I kept ringing everybody up going you should, because it was, there was some huge release in the US yeah. that week, um, and um, whoever their manager was went ballistic when they Clive found Davis out. Davis. That's of it, Arista. Clive Davis. Went ballistic when he found out we'd beat them. No, but he went ballistic when he found out that an album that had been available <laughs> yeah. for free for that's 10 exactly. weeks. <laughs> he demanded a recount. Yeah, <laughs> he? yeah he demanded Just a recount. Just like truly political, truly yeah. democratic style. It, it's amazing. It's but you see, he demanded a recount. Somebody who's been in the business for 400 yeah. years and has been at the very top for those 400 years. Yeah. Do you think that the industry that he's been on top of for those 400 years is more or less collapsing? And have you, are, you, only, are you the one who took the last card? It's, no. only, it's only kept itself going the last 10 years by repackaging everything it already had. Oh, no question. Yeah. Yeah. And listen, selling it yeah. for 15 quid. Yeah. And we, we, the great thing about this, what we were doing, compared to the, the, the industry, is the industry has become all about money. Yeah. It's maximising income. That's why they like the old economic model, because they sold loads of CDs, everybody's happy. The great thing about this was, and the reason we've been sort of people have slagged us off within the industry as well. They don't like it because this wasn't about the money. This was about the spirit of the thing. And that's why it was so exciting, the spirit of the thing. And kind of, obviously we hope to make money out of it, but it's not about, it's not about being greedy. 
you know, and that's the thing. And it's getting that whole thing about what's exciting about music. It's the spirit. And just thinking, yay, we're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it's well, great. So exactly. Yeah. Third, yeah. yeah, exactly. OK, but like the songs that you write, see, this is the thing that like a lot of people think, OK, they're very whatever, even morose, whatever. They're actually not. No, I mean, like, you, you might confront sort of some painful things. It might be a struggle and you try to overcome the struggle, but like they're very positive songs. That, Do you that think people miss that? Point? Well, especially this one. Yeah. That's why, you know, there's another reason why I didn't, you know, when we were coming to the end of it, my worst nightmare would, was, was having gone through this sort of thing and, and you know, made a piece of music, a uh, a 40 minutes of music that we felt was really positive and have it reduced to the usual stereotype black and white etching of what we are like. Of course, we don't help ourselves by talking about how difficult it is. But anyway, um, uh, it would have been a, just a, a, a bummer, man. It, it would be much better just to put it out and sort of, you decide, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And, and um, it wasn't just about the money, it was about the, please, you decide, you know. Yeah. Listen to all these things. Yeah. Have a listen to it yourself. And are you surprised by what you're able to come up with? And do you see that surprise is like, that's a result. I'm surprised and I'm pleased. As in, I never the thought music. that was gonna be, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the, 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 the whole kind of point is, um, Sorry, <laughs> 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 oh, no. <laughs> The whole kind of point is that you're surprised. The whole point is, you, you start some, like uh, body snatches, like, um, it was in a particularly peculiar frame of mind that afternoon. And, um, and you listen back to it, you think, what? Yeah. Where were we on? What, where, what was going on?